Welcome to Problems and Solutions. Today we'll start a new series. We'll solve problems of physics for scientists and engineers by Tipler and Mosca. We'll start with problem 79 of chapter 3. Let's read it. At half of its maximum height, the speed of a project is three quarters of its initial speed. What was its launch angle? Ignore any effects due to air resistance. So let's start drawing the initial velocity. I'll red draw the, the parabola of the, the movement. So let's start drawing the initial velocity here, the vector representing the initial velocity, V0, and the launch angle theta. Let's represent also the maximum height. Here we have the maximum height. Let's okay, maximum height will be here. Here we have oops maximum height H. And let's also write the information we'll use to solve the problem. We know that half of maximum height, 8 divided by 2, implies 3 quarters of the velocity equals, so when the height equals half of maximum height, this implies the velocity will be 3 quarters of initial velocity. That's the information we use to solve this problem. Let's use blue to the solution. Okay. Let's start using the information of the velocity. So we know that the velocity in any point of the tra trajectory can be written as the square root of the vertical velocity plus the horizontal velocity. And we can write also, let's write it here. Here we write the velocity, the vertical and the horizontal velocity. The horizontal velocity is very simple. It won't change during the movement, so we can write that the horizontal velocity will be the initial horizontal velocity, that is V0 project, projected in the horizontal direction, that is V0 multiplied by cosine of theta. The vertical velocity will be the initial vertical velocity, or V0 in the vertical direction, minus the acceleration multiplied by time. That is, the vertical velocity will be V0 sine of theta minus G multiplied by T. And let's use this velocity, let's put it in this equation. And we are considering the point that interests us, that is, when we have half of the, the maximum height. So, half of the maximum height implies that V will be 3 quarters of V0. Instead of using this equation, let square both sides of the, the equation. So we have v squared equals the vertical velocity squared. Here we have, let's copy it. Squared 
plus P0 cosine of theta also the square. So we'll have 9 divided by 16 V0 squared equals V0 squared sine square of theta minus 2 G T V0 sine of theta plus G squared T squared plus this term V0 squared cosine squared of theta. If you look at this equation, of course, we know that we can put together both these terms. So you can write 9 divided by 16 V0 squared V0 squared sine squared of theta plus cosine square of theta. This term equals 1. So we already get rid of these terms. Minus 2 g multiplied by t v0 sine of theta plus g squared t squared. This term equals 1. So instead of write it again let's cop this equation so this term will be zero so let's get rid of it and here we have this equation let's name it one this equation represents the velocity of the time we can isolate time if you want but it's a little bit difficult and not necessary in fact let's now work with the position only remember that the time appearing in this equation is the time when we are in this position half of the maximum height on this. Now let's write the equation for the x position, that is the height will be the initial height, this term is zero in this in, in our case, plus the vertical the initial vertical velocity times t minus the acceleration divided by 2 multiplied by the time squared. Here, of course, we starting from 0 of height, so this term won't appear, and the information we want to use is the, when the position is the maximum height divided by 2. So you have the initial vertical velocity, V0 sine of theta, multiplied by T, minus G divided by 2, T squared. And looking at this equation, it's easy to see that it's very similar to these terms. Here we have G squared t squared here we have also t squared multiplied by d and here we have v0 sine theta, theta v0 sine theta t and t if you multiply this equation by 2d we will get exactly this term so let's do it multiplying both terms both sides of the equation by 2d we will have g multiplied by 8 equals 2 d t v0 sine theta minus g 
squared t squared exactly this term exactly equals this term so we can instead of we can substitute this term here we will have 9 divided by 16 v squared minus v0 squared equals minus gt etc so minus g multiplied by 8 and therefore we can isolate 8 and we will be equal to here we have uh, 9 divided by 16 minus 16 divided by 16 and divided by g doing these calculations we will find that we will have 8 equals 7 divided by 16 v0 squared divided by g now it's only necessary to relate 8 0 8 the maximum height sorry with the velocity initial velocity and you can do this looking at the movement and noting that when we have the maximum height in this position the x velocity will be zero and you can use this information remembering the Torricelli equation you can write that the vertical velocity squared minus the initial vertical velocity squared equals 2 multiplied by the acceleration and the displacement in the vertical direction if you want to know the we want, we want to use this equation in the maximum height the max the velocity will be zero so you will have the vertical initial vertical velocity v0 sine of theta squared equals 2 g the maximum height therefore the maximum height will be v0 squared sine squared of theta divided by 2 g now it's only necessary to equate both equations, both these equations, and the problem will be solved because then we can isolate the angle theta. So let's do it. We will have 7 divided by 16 v0 squared divided by g equals v0 squared sine square of theta divided by 2 multiplied by g so we can cancel this and also cancel this and here we have 2 multiplied by 7 so we have sine square of theta equals 14 divided by 16 and now we can we can find theta let's use our calculator here uh, it's necessary to, to take the square root so square root of 14 divided by 16 here we have and now we want the inverse of the sine function so let's take it here okay so we we'll find we find that the angle will be 69.3 69.3 degrees and here we have the solution that's it